welcome to the class for today we are looking at types of machines remember that we have discussed machines already and when we discuss machine we talk about mechanical advantage velocity ratio efficiency of a machine and we did some calculations so for this particular class we'll be discussing types of machines okay so guys this is uh, nobleman science to source online if you have not subscribed please what are you waiting for subscribe to our channel click on the notification button so that whenever we upload a new video youtube will notify you is that okay you can also reach us via the whatsapp number that is showing on your screen so please get your writing material so that we can go straight to our class for today i remain notable michael and i'm the driver of this particular lecture series so straight to our class for today we are looking at types of machines types of machines On a daily basis you come across different types of machines and each of these types of machines they are classified differently is that okay so that's what we are looking at today so we have these different class types of machines you have the lever you have the pulley wheel and axle the inclined plane screw jack gear wheels you have the hydraulic press and then the wedge so these are different types of machines that you use on a daily basis you might not even know the type of machine you're using to carry out the different functions until you see them clearly here on a daily basis you use your lever like you use your wheelbarrow right so a wheelbarrow is like a lever of course a wheelbarrow is a lever so right from here we'll discuss different types of levers so that you know that the wheelbarrow that you use is a lever the uh, bottle opener that you use is a lever and the, the seesaw that you play on okay the seesaw that you play on is a lever too then you have pulleys that you use to lift loads then you have a wheel and axle you have inclined plane you have your screw jack your screw jack that used to lift your vehicle from ground maybe if you want to change tire and all that so these are machines that you use on a daily basis so today we are discussing different types of machines and we are going to be looking at these different types of machine gradually is that okay so we are looking at lever 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 machine is classified into three types. We have first class lever, we have second class lever, and then we also have third class lever, as the case may be. So, which of the lever is a first class lever? An example of a first class lever is you have your crowbar, your scissors, your plier, and your claw hammer. Now, what will make you to know that? the simple machine you are using is a first class lever is that the rotation point is at the center so any machine you hold that has a rotation point at the center so that when you apply an effort at one end you can use to overcome a load at the other end is a first class lever a simple example that you use at home on a daily basis is your scissors if you look at your scissors very well you know that the center is at the mean the rotation points at the center then you put your hand in between the two which is the effort point you now use to overcome a load which is maybe the cloth that you want to cut or the tester material that you want to cut right uh -huh. so the tester material you want to cut is your load why your effort is where you put your hand then the rotation points at the center so any machine that has a rotation point at the center is a first class lever so the examples are crowbar, scissors, your pliers, your claw hammer. So I can I can relate, you can begin to relate to those machines. Is that okay? And this machine they operate by the principle of moments. They operate by the principle of moments. So the principle of moments states that the sum of the clockwise moment is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment and moment of a force is equal to force times the perpendicular distance from the point of action 
So like for this load, the moment of this load is load times A, which is the distance from the point of fulcrum or the point of rotation. The moment of effort is effort times B, which is the distance from the point of rotation. So what the principle of moment says is that effort times B is equals to load times A. Clockwise moment is equals to anti-clockwise moment. That is the principle of moment. That's okay. So that is the principle that applies when you are talking about lever. Whether first class, second class, or third class, this principle applies. So this is first class lever. We are going to look at second class lever now. Remember, examples of first class lever, the crowbar, the scissors, the pliers, and the claw hammer. Is that okay? So second class lever, what are they? Class lever are those levers that has their point of rotation at the end while the load is at the center. Look at your wheelbarrow. Your wheelbarrow will hold the arms, your load is at the center, and the wheel they are at the end. Right? You will hold the arm, your load is at the center, which is maybe the sand that you are carrying on the wheelbarrow, but the rotation point is at the other end. So any lever that has a load at the center and the rotation points or the fulcrum or the pivot is at one end is called a second class lever. So example is a wheelbarrow, your bottle opener and a nut cracker. Hmm? Your bottle opener, your nut cracker and your wheelbarrow, they are examples of what? Second class lever. The load is between the effort and the fulcrum. The load is between the effort and the fulcrum. So these are examples of a second class lever, third class lever. For a third class lever, the effort is between the load and the fulcrum. The effort is between the load and the fulcrum. So it's just like your forceps or your sugar tongue or your forearm. These are examples of third class lever. The effort is between the load and the fulcrum. Is that okay? So this is these are the examples of different classes of lever. We talk about the first class lever in which the fulcrum is between the load and the effort. Then we talk about the second class lever in which you have your fulcrum at the end, then you have your load between the fulcrum and the effort then in top class lever the effort is between the load and the fulcrum then we've seen different examples of these simple machines is that okay so these are examples of lever and i want you to take note of them please take note of those examples of lever Now, we're talking about the pulley system. The pulley system, if you go to industries or some companies, you will see different pulley, but you don't really need to go to any company. In some places, you see where they use a, a simple wheel to carry some things up, like in a construction site, right? You put a rope around a circular object, then you can now, an effort is applied at one end, or as they are drawing the, load, the the rope, the load will be coming. You use it to fetch water from even uh, deep wells. You use it to fetch water from deep wells. Okay, so the pulley is made of a free wheel, which is what you are seeing here now. It has a groove through which a string or a rope is passed through. Right, so an effort that is applied at one end, 
is used to overcome a load that is at the other end. So these are examples of this is just an example of simple pulley. Like this is a simple pulley. This one has just one pulley. Pulley. This also has one pulley. The difference between these two is that this one is fixed. This is a fixed pulley, and then this is a movable pulley. The velocity ratio of a fixed pulley is equals to one. While for a movable pulley, the simplest one, the velocity ratio is two. Now the simplest formula for you to get your velocity ratio for a pulley system is two raised to power n. The n is equal to the number of pulley. So you can see that um, the simplest movable pulley system has this durest velocity ratio that is two. That is if n is equal to one, then for this one that has a single pulley, the velocity ratio will be equal to two. Now, for other complex pulley, movable pulley system, as I've said, the velocity ratio is equal to the number of pulleys in those systems. So, this is a pulley system, but this one is called the block and tackle pulley system. So, in this one, you have a fixed end and then you have a movable end. What you want to take note of in this pulley system is that the velocity ratio is equal to the number of pulleys. Here you have four pulleys. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So which means the velocity ratio of this pulley is equal to four. Now, this pulley system makes it very easy for you to lift a load with very minimal effort. You can actually see this working in the cranes. If you look at a crane, you will see that there's only one string. But that string runs through different numbers of pulleys. Right? So a simple a simple press on a gear, you can use it to lift a very heavy load. So with a small effort applied at one end, you can actually really use the block and tackle pulley system to lift a very heavy load. So if you go to construction site, you will see where these equipments are being used. And for this equipment, for that to work very well, you need to be able to calculate your efficiency, your velocity ratio, and your mechanical advantage. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing now. We want to take some calculations on efficiencies of some pulley systems and all that. So take note that the velocity ratio of a pulley system is equal to what? the number of pulleys on the machine okay so let's go and solve some problems so this is a problem a machine has a velocity ratio of five and is 80 percent efficient calculate the effort needed to lift a load of 200 newton with the aid of the machine okay i think we've solved similar problems before here you are giving that velocity ratio is equals to five and efficiency E is equals to 80%. Then you are given that load is equals to 200 Newton. We are now asked to find the effort. I think we have solved some problems like this before. Okay, we know that efficiency is equals to load over effort. Okay times 1 over velocity ratio times 100 over 1. Alright, so we know this already. So if we substitute our, what we have, efficiency is 80%, so say 80% all over 100. The load that is given to you is 200 newton. You are asked to look for effort, and you have a given velocity ratio to be what? To be five. Okay, so here make your effort the subject. Cross multiply. You have 200 times 1,000 all over 80 times five. 
so by the time you solve this out you will have 1250 newton as the effort so we've solved this before so there's no need to waste too much time just know how to apply this equation and then you will be able to solve it you see l over e is equal to mechanical advantage this is velocity ratio and this is so we have said that efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage all over velocity ratio times 100 over 1 but now you are looking for effort so you have to break down your mechanical advantage to load over effort so that you can be able to solve these kind of problems easily i hope that makes it clear for you thank you so let's go to another one So this is another question. It said a block and tackle system of pulleys consists of four pulleys or consisting of four pulleys is used to raise a load of 500 newton through a height of 20 meters. If the total work done against friction in the pulley system is equivalent to 80 joule, calculate the total work done by the effort, the efficiency of the machine effort applied. So first of all, let's bring out what we are giving. You are giving the pulley to have, giving the machine to have four pulleys. So which means velocity ratio is equal to four. I hope you understand that already. So that means our velocity ratio is equal to four, since it has four pulley, right? So since it has four pulley, velocity ratio is equal to four. I hope that is clear. Then load is given to us to be 500 newton. The height is equals to 20 meters. Work done against friction is equals to work done against friction is equals to 800 so now I say calculate the total work done now total work done the total work done is the total effort that is put in to carry this load now they say that the work done against friction is there it's 800 J. so which means the total work done will be equal to work done right plus the work done plus the frictional force so the number one total work done total work done will be equal to total work let me say tw is equals to work done by the pulley system it's equal to work done by the pulley system plus the work done against uh, to overcome friction or the effort time plus the work done to overcome friction friction or frictional force that is overcome okay or frictional force that is overcome and which is the 800 joule so work done we know it's equals to mgh so, so that is force times distance force as we're giving to you force and distance plus friction work done against friction so that will be 500 times 20 500 times 20 plus 800 joule this will give us the total work done because it must overcome frictional force so when you work this out, you are going to have 10,800 joule as the total work done. So that is number one. Total work done by the effort is equal to the work done plus the work done to overcome friction. Okay. So our work done is force times distance. So that gives us 500 times 20 plus 800 joule. This is the total work done by the effort. The efficiency of the machine is equal to work output. Efficiency is equal to 
work output let me just write it as work output all over work input work in times 100 over 1 so this is work output this is work input so your work output in this instance is equals to the work done in carrying the load is equal to the work done in carrying the load then the work that is put in to leave the load is the effort or it is the work input so this is the total work input then your work output is your work output is equals to 500 times 20 all of our work input which is the total work done by the effort times 100 all over 1 so when you work all this out this will cancel out so you, when you work everything out you are going to have 92.6% as your efficiency okay so that gives you your efficiency now you are asked to calculate the effort applied the effort applied we we know that efficiency e is equals to mechanical advantage or l load over e which is the effort times 1 over velocity ratio 1 over velocity ratio multiplied by 100 over 1 so efficiency of the machine has been calculated to be 92.6 so we can have that 92 92.6 92.6 okay so you can have 92.6 all over 100 equals to the load is 500 newton that was given to us 500 newton all over effort times 1 over 4 which is the velocity ratio okay so with this you can make your effort the subject of formula remember what we did previously in some other calculations so that your effort will be 500 multiplied by 100 all over 92.6 times 4 okay so by the time you work all this out you will have that the effort applied is equals to one three five newton okay so i hope this is relatively simple too for you to understand mm, the what i want you to take note of is this work that is used to overcome frictional force this work because for the effort to be able to carry this, so it must overcome this force so which means the total work done will be this one this 800 j plus the work done now that is what we did here to give us the total work done by the effort then before we now look for the work um, output well this is the work input work output of our work input times 100 percent to give us the efficiency then we now apply that one to find the effort based on the other questions that we have solved before okay so i hope this one is relatively simple too for you to comprehend and understand so now we can go to your test please solve these problems put your answers on the comment section or on the whatsapp number that is showing on your screen i will look at them and then make my own comments 
so thank you this is where we are stopping our class for now is that okay so solve all these problems and you can also solve other ones too in your various textbooks guys if you have not subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel give us a like give us a thumbs up click on the notification button so that whenever we upload the video youtube will notify you reach us through the number that is showing on your screen and then you can give us a comment is that okay comment give us positive comment to encourage us we thank you so much for being with us invite your friends so that they can also come and enjoy what you are enjoying in youtube this is physics class direct to your doorstep thank you so much for your time we hope to see you in our next class